Hello. Uh, hello, Sidemind. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be hopefully a quick video. Um, talking about Shadow Blade. As usual, um, again, if I'm a bit quiet or a bit off, it's just because I've been sick a lot again. I'm pretty sure I have the Constitution score of 4 in the real life. Um, so, yeah, so there was a, um, a thread on the forums. Um, a bit of confusion about Shadow Blade, about it not um, automating from the sheet. Um, go through things, discuss the rules, and so on. It is confusing because even D and D Beyond gets it wrong. Uh, as much as you can be wrong, uh, it doesn't automate well on the sheet because it's a very unusual spell. Um, for what the sheet is, because obviously the, the sheet um, on a character can only work within a certain frame, and this one of the spells goes outside that frame, and therefore it's not going to work very well. It was one of the reasons why the devs created what was essentially the custom items and custom actions um, features so that you can add or create custom ad hoc um, things as you need to for your own automation purposes um, for those nuanced situations where it's not going to apply from anything, from anything else. Um, I have made a video about custom actions and items. It is a pretty long video. I think it's like an hour long. I'll put the link somewhere. It'll be like a card at the top right or it'll be in the description down below. Um, to go over that in more detail. But that's going to be the way you're going to have this on your sheet. Um, displayed properly. Um, would be to have it as a, a custom action. Um, essentially. Um, unfortunately, uh, custom actions... Um, can only be done through certain things. They can be done through something like an item where you can easily toggle it um, on and off because obviously this is a spell that will last for one minute. Um, you could make a feat because they do have custom actions as part of feats. Um, however, adding and removing the feat is kind of a bit, a bit too much effort really. Um, so you don't want to just add add the reference here so you can quickly roll things but also make a note somewhere on there. Um, to indicate whether it's going to be actually in, whether the spell is active or not. Um, well, there's a bunch of ways you can do that. But anyway, so let's just see what it's, because when you have it on your sheet, it does give you the option to roll the 2d8 uh, psychic. That's actually wrong uh, because the spell itself, let's treat it as a spell, direct spell damage. Um, the damage from the spell doesn't come direct from the spell itself, it comes from the weapon that it creates. Um, this is the spell here. Uh, it is from Xanathar's Guide, I think. Uh, you would get the Threads of Shadow to create a sword of solidified glue in your hand. This magic sword lasts until the spell ends. It counts as, it counts as a simple melee weapon with which you are proficient. Uh, it deals 2d8 psychic damage on a hit and has the finesse, light, and throw properties, range 20 60. Um, the rest is irrelevant. So, this is the part that people are tripping out, and what you were in the Beyond trips up on is it counts as a um, sure proficient. Let's do the second one here. Um, it is important to note that it counts as a simple melee weapon because that means, for all intents and purposes, as far as the rules go and what to roll. You, you, you can see it doesn't mention anything about what you're supposed to do for two hitting. Um, you know, it doesn't mention what attack roll you're using then, because it's a simple melee weapon. So you use any attack rolls and any damage rolls and everything that normally apply as part of a simple melee weapon. Um, it mentioned here it deals two days psychic. It's only in reference to the weapon roll part, which is you know, for example, a short sword is one d eight. Long sword is one d ten, I think it is, or one d eight plus or one d ten. That's the role of the weapon and what it does. Um, this is just saying it does two d eight instead of whatever the other weapons do because it's what it is. Um, that's what gets increased, but you still roll your um, strength or dexterity 
as part of the attack and damage rolls because it is just a simple melee weapon. And that was actually clarified by Jerry Corwood, who is the rules designer for Wizards of the Coast, and this is when he was doing the um, Sage advice before it became a separate thing. Um, somebody asked him, you know, does the Shadow Blade uh, farm the spell? Add Dex or Strength as appropriate when dealing damage, or is it just the 2d8? And he, the person who writes the rules, does say that you do, in fact, um, add the appropriate ability modifier because it's still, it is a weapon, and you use weapons rules. The weapons rules are in the combat section, chapter 9 of the PHP, or basic rules. Uh, as it says when it comes to making the attack roll, uh, the modifiers of the roll are your ability modifier, which is used for your strength, um, normally, um, or dexterity. Uh, weapons have finesse, can use dex instead of strength for melee, <coughs> which it does have. And you add your proficiency bonus. You just roll the raw d20, and there you go. It also goes down under damage and healing. The damage rolls. Uh, you roll the damage die or dice, and then modify the fire damage. So when attacking with the weapon, you add your ability modifier, in this case strength or dex, uh, the same modifier you use for the attack roll to the damage. Um, the spell tells you which damage to roll for damage. And so yeah, it does say here that when you're attacking with the weapon, bear in mind that's what you're attacking with, you're not attacking with the spell, as in the spell attack or spell whatever, or spell save, um, you are attacking with a weapon. It may have been created by a spell, but it's still not attacking with a weapon. So... This means that it does 2d8 plus your strength or dexterity modifier. Again, that's probably why it doesn't actually add it here, uh, because it can't. You know, this is not something a spell normally does. It, a spell's damage doesn't vary by your ability um, in terms of being able to add strength or dex. You either have to add two different versions, specifically for strength or dex, um, or it just keeps it as 2d8 and lets you um add the relevant ability modifier as needed but it makes it very insufficient it's not very good, good way it also lists it under bonus actions um because that's the casting time obviously as the weapon you don't use a bonus action you use your normal attack action so that's the soil it's, it's very awkward um only way you can redo this is to create a custom action um You'd have to bear in mind that the custom action isn't going to be uh, scaled to spell level. You have to choose, like, say, the 2d8. If you want to add anything extra, you're going to have to just roll that extra separately. Um, or create new custom actions for each spell level. There's only a few times where it, where it adds, so it isn't too many if you want to do that route. Um, like, the maximum is going to be five days. So it's going to be... Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so you could create six different versions of custom actions for each spell level as you level up and can use higher level spell slots. Um, if you want to do that, or you can just add one custom action for the two d eight, and then you can just use your um, uh, custom dice to add however extra many d eights you needed to, to add on top of that. <clears throat> So anyway, I'll ask all that one from So how do you actually add the custom action? So let's go here. So if you manage custom, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm going to be coughing up a bit because, uh, as I said, I've been sick and I'm always sick. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter which one you go, you choose. Um, we are technically making weapons. So let's go with weapon. And obviously here. So the attack type, um, we can just leave blank, because it's not a natural or an attack strike. Um, and a range, we put in melee range. And a stat, we can put in your strength or your dexterity, the one that is you're going to be using. You can't automate that part, it has to be one or the other. Um, on this particular character, I went with dexterity. Um, so we'd use dex instead. Um, and before we do dice count, we do damage type. I'm going to put in psychic. And the die type is going to be d8. 
Now I did this because whenever I put like two here and then go over to do the die type, it resets this, and that's why I used to keep struggling on. Um, so always put the two. So always do the die type first and then dice count. Now it does two d eight. Uh, you can see it's working down here. Yeah. yeah. Um. So with the range, we're going to have a bit weird because technically it should be five feet for a melee weapon, but it does have thrown property of twenty basic range and sixty long range. Um, I'm going to put that here because it's kind of similar to what the dagger does. It is going to say like twenty foot reach, which is not going to be right accurate, but we'll get to that. Um. Again, this is obviously just for your own references, just to make it easier for you to... Uh, yeah, so put that as action, because it'll be part of your attack action. It also means it'll, it'll list here when we're done. Action time, activation time is one. We're going to be affected by martial arts, even if you're not a martial arts character, as in, as in a monk with martial arts. Because it counts as a simple melee weapon, all simple melee weapons are technically considered monk weapons, so might as well check that. Just in case you're multi-class. Uh, you are proficient with it, as it says. Obviously you check dual wield if this is something you were dual wielding and using this as your offhand. Um, display as attack. Here we put in uh, Shadow Blade. Um, snippet is the new it's a bit weird. It used to be, this used to be the notes field, but it doesn't actually create notes on the side. This is what we're going to put down in the description. So just see the um, uh, weapon as created by Shadow Blade the Spell. I'm going to go with that. Um, obviously, you, you can pick. Bigger notes and, and stuff. This is be what we show. This is what um, would be the description. In fact, I'm gonna put in just for display purposes description. So I'm just putting those here there just so for the display purposes. But this is where you'd put in whatever you need to uh, make it easier for you to see. Um, in terms of Choosing where it's going to be active or not, um, the different ways. Um, you could just put in something like uh, uh, active. I'd consider that be a bit long. I probably just put it. I probably put it in a small uh, something. Uh, so here you can have. Should be a tick somewhere. Huh? Yes, you could like in the tick or grab that. Um, or cross and do something like that. Uh, if anyone didn't know that, that's like if you're on a Windows, you press the Windows key, press the full stop, it brings up your emoticon emoji thing and you can you don't even need to go in here you can just type so if you put in like you know tag e and it does a search um so that's one way that you can um you know you just change that when you need to so there you have it so here you'd have the roll That's the damage. And of course, if you wanted to create, uh, if you were going to be doing at a high level, um, you just add the extra d8s as we did from using this here. How many clicks roll? So it doesn't take that long to do extra d8s if you need them. Um, you can always, you know, just go back in and edit as needed. It's relatively easy to edit. Um, so this is the description. This is what happens when you click on it. And this is the description that will appear when you click on 
Um, in my briefs, what I have is the full spell description here, um, or at least the notes about the fact that it has advantage or disadvantage. It has advantage when you're in dim light or darkness, stuff like that. And down here is the snippet. Um, this is what is. This is going to be just a quick reference. Again, you can always click it for expanded. But that's pretty much how you're going to add Shadow Blade actually works. Um, as I said, use some reference to show you whether it's actually usable or not. You could even do something like um, uh, uh, doing, doing, because then it tells you how many turns are left. I wouldn't even put turns, I just put 10. So then I use it, and then at the end of my next turn, I can then just reduce this to nine and keep going because it lasts for 10 turns it lasts for one minute and each it's that one minute is 10 turns so that's one way you can keep track of how long you have it and then the exo tick is your way of tracking whether the spell is active or not and whether you can actually use it um i said if you wanted to um besides you could just change how many dice are here so if you choose three, tab, click out, and now does 3d8. So that's the way of getting it on your sheet. That's going to be easier to roll um, more conveniently. Um, it's a bit of a pain to have to do that, but unfortunately the system itself can't really add that for you because spells can't add actions in that way. Um, because this is a very unique situation of the spell creating everything through an item. Um, rather than just doing the damage directly. It's a bit weird, but that's going to be how you're going to best do it, I suppose. Um, hopefully they'll change in the future, but I doubt it. Um, hope this helped. Uh, thank you very much.